feel like I'm going to cry. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Wait, what's going on here? He's, uh, he said that he's um, picking up all the bad things from your body. All the toxic things like that. Yeah, traditional way. Good to see you guys again. Today's adventure starts at the airport in Manila and takes us to an itty bitty little country about two hours away from Manila by plane, the nation of Brunei. Now, this country is no stranger to controversy and while I've heard a lot about Brunei in the news in recent years, I wanted to see what life was like for tourists and for locals on the ground. And the only way to do that is to go to the country. So my travel squad and I decided to take a trip to Brunei to experience the country and the culture firsthand. I was really excited to finally have the opportunity to go to Brunei because I have some dear Bruneian friends that I traveled with years ago who I've still kept in touch with. Seeing old friends and experiencing a country through local guides is really the best way to get an authentic experience. So I was really excited to take off. So I'm traveling with my brother and his girlfriend, Olivia. Look how fun it is traveling with them. This looks like it became my room. <laughs> We arrived late last night, so we were not able to get SIM cards at the airport. Everything was closed by the time we got in. So the first thing I'm doing this morning is grabbing a SIM card. I'm walking into a shopping complex, and so we're gonna go grab a SIM card inside. Okay, SIM card acquired. So I went to the Progressive uh, franchise. And this is actually at the airport, so you can get the SIM cards at the airport, but again, when we got there last night, everything was closed, so we had to come into the city here. There's not that many people, so it's nice because there's no queue. You just walk in, and everyone speaks English, so it's very easy to communicate. This was 25 Brunei dollars, which is about like 20 to 22 US dollars and unlimited data for seven days, unlimited calling. So this is a really good plan for you when you come to Brunei. Bendar Seri Begawan, or BSB as the locals call it, is more like a small town rather than a city. It took less than 20 minutes for my guide to tour me around the city by car. The capital and surrounding areas are astonishingly green, the air smells refreshing, and the streets are groomed and well-maintained. Brunei's greatest source of income is oil, and it became obvious when I noticed how much gas prices were. We took a walk around Brunei's largest mosque, Jame Asar Hassanil Bolkia Mosque, and then headed to the open market. Hello. Hello. I'm walking through the open market here in BSB or Bandar Seri Begawan, the capital of Brunei. There are not a lot of people here right now because it's a weekday, but typically on weekends there will be people buying local made handicrafts, buying the fresh produce, veggies, fruits, local made handicrafts. 
All of these crafts here are mostly from the entire island of Borneo. So on the island of Borneo, there are three nations. There's Malaysia, Brunei, and Indonesia. So the lovely lady here is letting me try what's called Kuyu Chin Chin. It's a dry snack here in Brunei. It's made with sugar from palm trees and then it's coated with flour. Kinda tastes like a pretzel, a little bit. Like a sweet pretzel. Yep, I could I could eat a bunch of these. This is our traditional way of uh, releasing the toxic from the body. Okay. Oh my gosh. Right here. Okay. Okay, it's a little painful. It's like he's pressing on the pressure points inside my <laughs> No good. This one I no good. Yang muanya ni, ano kan? Merah. Sekarang putih wang. No good. Taking out all the bad things from your body, all the toxic things like that. Yeah, traditional way. So that's the function of the wood on the ring over there. So I didn't realize I was walking into this unique Bruneian jewelry street reflexology basically. This lovely sweet man explained to me, well to my guide who then translated it to me, about the use of the wooden rings as one of its purposes being a reflexology tool for the pressure points on the tips of your fingers. Do you want more or is... Yeah. Ah. Keep going. Let's get Are you sweating? All is that... of the top, a little bit. Yeah. This is such an insane pain, you guys. You have no idea. I don't know what he's doing to my fingers, but it is like, uh, it's like going deep in my hands. So in reflexology, applying pressure to the tips of your fingers here where the nerve endings are can affect other parts of your body and your overall health. The pressure on my fingers felt like needles almost and they were going inside my hands and kind of like up through my arms and it's like my arms were shaking but for whatever reason I feel like this subsiding of pain and pressure now and this I feel like he needs to do it in this hand but I but I'm a little bit <laughs> scared to do it but we're getting into it he's gonna do it again I was totally open to trying out reflexology it's relatively risk-free because it's not invasive and it's pretty safe to try out wow Thank you so yeah, yeah, much. Yeah, yeah. Terima kasih. Okay, now your face okay. looks uh, uh, shiny and glowy uh, after black, black, black. Yeah, no Just now it was uh, pale. Okay. The color is black. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Selamat po. Selamat po. Terima kasih. Bye. We just stopped for a bite to eat at a restaurant called Soto Pavo. So while we're here, let's talk about Brunei first impressions. We arrived late last night into Brunei at around 2 a.m. First thing I noticed is how clean and refreshing it was to smell the air anywhere. Today, driving around the city, I noticed that most of the city is lush, verdant, green, fresh smells. The roads are well-maintained. The gardens and the trees along the roads are very nicely manicured. We haven't sat in traffic today. I haven't waited in any lines today. So, so far, Brunei is pleasant and relaxing. And now it is time to do my favorite thing when traveling to a new country, and that is eat the food. So this dish right here is called empalayat. Check it out. Looks like a jellyfish. So this dish is the most unique, or like the weirdest, strangest dish to try when you're in Brunei. We've got some really delicious, colorful looking beef here. And we've got some deep fried fish. I ordered that. Oh, that smells like coconut milk and ginger and garlic. Some turmeric's in there. A little side of fish, also beautiful, brightly colored. Smell lots of spices in there. We've got some dipping sauces here. Just got served some clams. This green stuff over here, I think is called baby ferns. And then 
the dish of the day. Well, besides the weird jellyfish dish, the beef soup with vermicelli noodles, this is what I'm really excited for. But these are the local yeah, chopsticks. Look, they're made easy. It's stuck together, to... huh? It is. It's... So with the local Brunei chopsticks, you put your hand over it, over the chopsticks, not under. Nothing like that. Okay, I yeah, I'm, I'm having a, a little bit of a hard time here. I don't know if I can do this. I think I'm starting to get it. And then I dip in here. You swallow it? You just swallow it? this whole yep. instead of chewing it. I'm gonna swallow it whole. Nice. Oh wow, that was pretty good. Wow, I liked it. So for our first meal in Brunei, what I'm really enjoying about this is that most of the dishes on the table here are vegetables steeped in some sort of spices. We've got chili, coconut, turmeric, spices, and it just smells really good. The vegetables are fresh tasting, and also lots of seafood. Time to go to the next spot. I am about to take a boat across the water to the largest water village in the world, Kampong Air. So this water village has been here since the early 13th century. This is the beginning of Brunei civilization. In those days, building a community on the water actually made living a lot easier. You have a water supply, you have a food supply, transportation, trading, and the vendors and the merchants that were all working here in this village. And today we get to walk around a traditional river house and see what it's like to live on the water. This water village is very unique. We've got a main road right here, and all of the rest of the walkways lead up to everyone's front doors. It's a very close local community here that's been thriving for centuries. We spent the rest of the day on the water where we got to cruise around the mangroves. We were able to get a glimpse of the proboscis monkeys, which are native to Borneo, and very unusual looking because they've got this huge pendulous nose. It was off to sleep for an early start the next morning. Good morning, everyone. It is a bright and early morning, about 6.45. Today we are leaving the capital here and we're taking a day trip out to the Tamboro district where we will be hiking through the national park Ulu Ulu. First, we gotta drive to the port, which we just did now. Then we gotta get on a boat. Then we gotta drive to another port. Then we gotta take a long boat to the entrance of the resort at the Ulu Ulu National Park. There's no access by road. The only way you can access this place is by the water. Right, so we are here right now. In five minutes to go to Batangu, all the way upstream to go to the resort. So Okay, we are going to take this long boat up the river about 45 minutes. I was not expecting to go deep into the rainforest here in Brunei. Definitely an interesting and unique thing to do while you're in this country. I'm about to start the hike up to the canopy. It's about 850 steps, and we are actually going to be taking stairs the entire time. They're wooden stairs. So this is what the trail is gonna look like. Let's begin. Okay, we're gonna cross this hanging bridge right here. This is the only hanging bridge you gotta cross, so if you got a fear of hanging bridges, you just gotta do it one time. Let's go. We're about halfway up and my tour guide here 
excuse me, all of my sweat. It's pretty hot and humid here. My tour guide here, Faiz, was just sitting here waiting for me and he noticed a, a pit viper right on the leaves here. So I don't know how you saw that. That thing is so camouflaged well. Let me show you. It's canopy climbing time. We're about to take these stairs, these rails, all the way up. Ooh, these bugs are insane. Wow, you just gotta keep moving. Okay, are you ready? Yep, I'm good. You guys, I'm standing at the top of the rainforest in Brunei. This is incredible. <laughs> oh, I've never been at the canopy of a rainforest before. Yeah, so I've, I've got my personal Hi, bug today. swatter here. <laughs> These bugs are intense. They're just, they have no mercy. dinner here at what's called the box. It's basically an open air uh, food court with a bunch of different stands that you can go to order food from. And we are being treated by the food bloggers of Brunei. So all of the food that we're eating for dinner tonight are all the recommendations by the expert food bloggers. So our first dish of the night is called Soto. It's a soup with intestines, liver, and meatballs. What's this? I'm not the biggest liver or intestines fan, but when in Brunei, it is the Bruneians do. All right guys, the verdict with the intestine and the liver is that it is really good, especially with all these noodles and this beef broth here. to many places in the world and I can truthfully tell you that I would be hard-pressed to name a place that I didn't like. Yes, for many of the places I have been, there are practices I have staunchly disagreed with that completely contradict my beliefs. Um, some things that I will probably never understand no matter how hard I try. But whenever I travel somewhere new, no matter what I have read or what I have seen, I always try and remind myself that I am a guest in this country. That doesn't mean I won't ask the difficult questions or betray my own beliefs, but I strive to be respectful and engage in constructive conversation so that I may better understand what's going on firsthand. I want to see and feel the positive attributes of a country while also being aware of the darker sides to hopefully start an insightful dialogue. So my friends in Brunei and I had the chance to discuss this, the, to discuss all the recent controversy and what it means to them and how it's affecting them. And from our conversations, they told me that they actually live pretty normal, uneventful lives and that any reports online that would say anything otherwise are somewhat inaccurate. We got a lot more in depth into this conversation because like I said, I'm not afraid to ask difficult questions, but I am going to be very sensitive uh, and respectful about how I talk about my time in Brunei here. I believe that it's through these conversations, opening up, trying to understand each other, sharing information freely with one another is the first step to change. Brunei is a beautiful country with wonderful people and amazing attractions for tourism and I'm really glad I had the opportunity to experience it for myself. Anyway, those were my first impressions of Brunei. If you'd like, leave your impressions of Brunei if you've also visited the country in the comments below and we can continue this dialogue. Thank you guys for joining this week. It was nice to see you. It was nice to spend time with you. I'll see you next week.